Okay, I'm gonna be taking a closer look at the Ethereum phishing scam that's been going on over the past couple of days. And here's how it starts. It starts with a Reddit message. So in Reddit, you can use something very similar to Markdown to post messages and to send private messages. So you can make links where the link text doesn't actually go to where the link says that it goes. Um, and somebody can, and somebody did, go ahead and send a private message to everybody in r slash Ethereum saying, hey, use this link below to click and go to myetherwallet.com. And it says myetherwallet.com, but if you click on it, you end up going somewhere very different, myetherwallet.com.de, right? I've seen a variety of different URLs used for this. I've seen myetherwallet.com.im, I've seen myetherwallet.tech, et cetera, et cetera. And again, myetherwallet is an open source tool that people use to create and store Ethereum wallets. So it's very easy to clone the source code for it because it's all open source. And you'll see, so right here on the right is the real myetherwallet.com site. And on the left is the fake phishing site. And it's a pretty good one-to-one -one replica. I mean, it's actually kind of funny to, to look at this and see some of the differences. For example, like myetherwallet.com shows the latest block in the right-hand corner. And on the fake site, they don't because they're not actually making API calls. You have to like have working code to put this kind of live interaction in and they're too lazy to do that. Also, I think this is kind of funny that they leave the actual real donation links for My Ether Wallet. Like these are the same links. So even the fake phishing site has the My Ether Wallet actual donation links, which is pretty funny. Also really funny is right here on the top, this like security reminder, because on myetherwallet.com, this banner is saying to beware of fake phishing sites, don't enter your key. So obviously they need to change that, but they still want it to look like myetherwallet. So they put a security reminder that we strongly recommend you set up two-factor authentication, which is pretty funny. But anyway, what will then happen is that people will begin to get alerted about the scam that's going on and they'll start to talk about it. So on Reddit, for example, you'll see that somebody's saying, hey, somebody's sending a phishing DM, don't click on it, scammer alert, etc., etc." You'll see people posting on Twitter about it. So even, even Vitalik has tweeted about this, that there's you know, a scam going on where people are posting Faith My Ether Wallet links. And what starts to happen is people start to get tangentially aware, like, oh, something's going on. I keep reading all this stuff about a scam. And then that is where the real scam starts. So somebody will go into the Slack channels for all of the ERC-20 tokens. And remember, if you put in your private key in one of these phishing sites, you could get your token stolen also. So this is a good target. And they'll start sending direct Slack messages to people that say, hey, there's been an attack today on my Ether wallet and I lost Ether. You should just check your balance. And because people have heard like this, you know, on Reddit and Twitter that there's something going on, they might be like, oh yeah, I really should check my balance. Now Slack is not like Reddit. You can't post markdown messages. You actually have to post URLs and they'll render the text. So if someone says go to myetherwallet.com in Slack, this is the actual URL. So this seems like it's a pretty like, safe thing for people to do. And congratulations, you played yourself because it's not. For example, if I do my ether wallet, but I'm gonna use two capital I's, right? Instead of the two L's and post it in Slack. Well, that looks a lot like my ether wallet. Now I click on it and I'm at a phishing link. Congratulations. So now people are going on Slack and saying, um, there's a scam going on. Just check your just check your wallet. And people, because they've heard of the scam, they'll go click on it. And how successful has this scam been? Well, it's been pretty successful. This is one of the known addresses that was stealing Ether from the scam. And I remember seeing this up around three hundred fifty thousand dollars at one point. And it's not just stealing Ether; it's stealing tokens also. And you can go look at the comments to see people freaking out about it, which is actually kind of an interesting read to see how people react to getting fished and what their perspectives are. What can you really do about this is kind of an interesting question. So Etherscan, for example, can label accounts so they can identify this address as a fake phishing account and say that it's been used in a phishing scam, for example. Um, what can you do about their ether? Well, there's not much. I mean, it's not super hard, I think, to tumble ether. So one example that you could do is you could go take your stolen ether, 
on shapeshift.io and convert that into Monero or Zcash or one of these anonymous currencies, then make transactions in Monero. And then all you need to do is shapeshift it back if you really wanted to keep your ether or something. And you've kind of got a way to get rid of your ether. So it, the way to stop this might be at the level of companies like shapeshift.io or Bittrex or some of the exchanges that people try to use to dispense the stolen currency and have them look at these accounts and be like, we're not going to accept ether from this account potentially. So as an experiment, I went to one of these phishing sites and I put a couple dollars in an ether account and then I entered my private key on the site just, just to see what would happen. And what ended up happening was it just redirected me. Once I put it in, it immediately redirected me back to my etherwallet.com, which I think is probably a smart move because then it's like, oh, maybe I just like type something wrong. Like, like you're in a normal place now, but they already have your private key. But I was surprised they didn't immediately take the ether. I thought they would just have like some script or some bot that just steals ether immediately, but they actually left it in the account. And that's actually probably smart because if you have a small amount of ether, in your account, it probably makes sense from the scammer's perspective to see if you deposit more now that they have the private key. So if it's only a couple dollars or a small amount, the move is to probably wait and see if you deposit more. If it's a large amount, they probably steal it immediately. And then I waited and waited and then 12 hours later, so um, 12 hours right here after I entered my private key into the account, my ether was stolen by the scammer. So never enter your key on a website you arrived at by clicking a link. You know what? Never enter your key on a website, period. Get one of these things like a Ledger Nano or a Trezor, or you can use other workflows. Go find somebody that knows what they're talking about, about cryptocurrencies and ask them, Hey, what should I be doing so that I'm not at risk for doing something stupid and losing all my ether and getting wrecked? Anyway, peace.